Hi everyone, it's Lucy and today I'm going to be sharing with you what I bought on my trip to Korea. So I'm sure a lot of you are across it, but if you're new here or if you just need a quick little refresh, I recently went on a trip to Japan and Korea. You may have seen some of the first few videos in my Japan series, but today we're switching up and we're gonna do some of the Korea videos. So if you saw my what I bought in Japan video, my little haul for what I got in Japan, we are basically doing the same today, but what I got in Korea. So prepare yourself a little drinky drink, a beverageino, get some snackies ready because I'm gonna do a little show and tell of everything I bought on my trip. But before I jump into showing you all of the goodies, I do want to say a big thank you to the sponsor of this video, which is Pecom. And they're actually a very fitting sponsor for this video because I'm going to be showing you all the amazing things I picked up from Korea and they are an amazing Korean skincare brand. Now I'm sure if you're watching and you're a K-beauty fanatic, then you've probably heard of Pecom, but if you haven't, let me give you a quick rundown. Pecom is a pretty new brand on the K-beauty scene. They launched in late 2021 and they are all about creating effective and well-formulated products for everyone, but also catering to acne prone and sensitive skin types. And they are certified vegan and fragrance free. And as a longtime K-beauty girly K-beauty fan, one thing I really respect about Pecom is the time they've taken to develop their range. They're not launching like 20 products like every season. It's not like overwhelming. All their launches are really thoughtful. And the one word I would use to describe the brand personally is reliable. So when I was packing for my trip I decided to take a bunch of like little travel minis I had because I wanted to use them up and I wanted to pack light but I had actually already begun testing some Pecom products before I went on the trip and while I was on the trip I found myself missing and thinking about the products I'd been testing and those two products were the underpore foam cleanser and the Kato cream so the underpore foam cleanser is basically like a textbook plush gentle foaming cleanser. And I feel like sometimes when you're on the hunt for a gentle cleanser, you feel like you have to sacrifice that really satisfying foam. But that is not the case with this one from Pecom. Use a really small amount and you get a full face of like frothy, delicious bubbles. And it's a surprisingly deep and thorough clean, but my skin never feels stripped or squeaky or dehydrated. And as a dehydration prone girly, that is a real risk that I deal with for a lot of cleansers. And before I use the word reliable, and I would say the Kato cream is exactly that. This cream is formulated with ceramide, so it's very soothing and protective to your skin barrier. And it has this really rich and creamy texture, but it's never heavy or greasy or sticky. It works well with all the other products in my routine. I can just slather my face in it, let it marinate. And I have a succulently moisturized noggin. So I'll pop links in the description box below for these two and Pecom if you haven't checked them out already. Thank you again to Pecom for sponsoring this video and let me show you what other goodies I picked up. So I think I'm going to start off with a random assorted cute things because I think they're the first things that I bought on the trip. Again, if you watched my what I bought in Japan video, I did a similar kind of thing here because obviously I was having fun and traveling is fun, but I was also concentrating on filming some content for this channel. So I was kind of in my little, you know, Burl Goss brain at times. So even though I'd be going around and doing things and going to places and filming shopping content because I know you're interested in that, I'm sort of not in like consumer shopping mode. I'm kind of in like work shopping mode, <laughs> which I realize is like not a relatable thing. But anyway, point being for the first half of the trip, we were in Seoul for a couple days. Then we went to Gyeongju and Busan. And then for the second half of the trip, we came back to Seoul and we were there for like over a week. For me, at least I wait until my last destination to pick all those things up because then I don't have to like, you know, lug them around the whole, you know, like, I don't know. But I think it's also like a little pinch of denial. Like, oh, <laughs> I don't need to get that because I'm going to be here forever. I will not be returning home. Anyway, uh, when we first came Came back to Seoul we ended up staying in Hongdae and I'd only been to Hongdae once so I hadn't really like scratched the surface you know so we were walking around in the evening and we just came across this shop and I was like immediately obsessed with it I had never heard of this store before but it's called butter and I was just like enraptured because until this point I hadn't really been like shopping I hadn't really been in the shopping mood but this store kind of like broke the seal for me because I just thought it was like I don't know I just got like really excited I, I guess it's kind of like art box but but also sort of like a line friends or cacao friends store because they have these characters, but I had never heard of these characters before. And when I was looking them up later, it just seems like it's just this store, like these original characters from this store. I don't, I don't entirely know. In particular, they have this character. <laughs> you can see I'm like a giddy with excitement, like. <laughs> But this was one of the characters. I don't know if you can see, it's a pink bunny rabbit and it was called Scrabbit. And I love bunny rabbit characters. Like when I think about all of the cute characters I like, they're all 
they're all bunny rabbit. They had like full like scrap it sections and I was like feral. <laughs> I was so excited. There's also this kind of like chubby star shaped bear. I really liked that. They had this blue cat as well. It was very, very cute. I wish for the Butter Friends Empire to expand, but I got this little notepad because I keep one on my desk to like write my little to-do lists for the day. And it was Scrabbit holding a little strawberry ice cream. Like I'm like a very annoying consumer. Like brands and marketing professionals hate her because I'm very picky. But when they just make something that's specifically for me, that goes out the window. This was made for me, um, specifically just me. Everything was quite affordable. This was only like five Australian dollars, something like that. I also got this weekly planner, but I just liked that it had like an undated weekly kind of setup. And then my boyfriend Max actually pointed this out to me because they had Scrabbit and Co, but they also had like Sunny Angels and Sanrio, like they had everything, but they had a section of like desk stuff and they had this, and I will include a clip here because I have put it on my desk, but it is a Sanrio desk pad and specifically a My Melly desk pad and I am obsessed with it. It's so cute. I don't know why I didn't get one sooner. You can see on the back they had all the little different ones, but I'm I'm a My Melody girly. So I picked up a couple things there and also they are great for cute little souvenirs if you want to bring back some cute stationery and stickers and things like that for friends. But speaking of My Melody, uh, I also picked these up from Korean Daiso. I don't know if they had these in Japanese. Did I go to Daiso in Japan this trip? I don't, I don't know if I did. A concerning realization. But these are just little like nail wraps and then some nail stickers with my Melody. I do my nails at home and they were cute and only like 1,000 or 2,000 won each. So like a dollar or two, which would make sense because it's Daiso. Okay, Lucy, very smart. I went to the nail mall. I assume it's the nail mall. I don't know what else you could call it, but you might've seen some TikToks about it, but I do my own nails. Don't look too closely because I'm not, I'm not that good at doing it. It's just kind of like for fun. I just enjoy doing it. But previously I've mainly bought my nail supplies off Amazon from Daddy Bezos, but I know that Korean nail products like Korean gel polishes are just special. And I've seen videos of them online and they just look special and delicious. Yeah, I, I went like a little bit ham, but I would say for the amount of time that I spent there and for the amount of things I got, I was surprised that I didn't do more damage. Because when I initially went in, I was very overwhelmed and I almost like wanted to leave because I was like, there's too much stuff. Like I was almost just gonna buy like a couple things and then leave. But I like persevered and I like explored each of the different aisles and like got myself a coin because it's like, a, there's just a lot. I got this many. <laughs> nail polishes. <laughs> I got quite a few. I, I hadn't treated myself to some nail polishes in a while. I hadn't bought any new like colors in a while and they just had such a beautiful variety and some of them are really affordable and just like these kinds of colors I just hadn't seen before. So I went a little bit buck wild. I'll insert a picture here of the swatches I did of them so you can kind of get idea of the colors I got. Lots of pastels to be expected, um, baby pinks and blues and some kind of more special shimmery ones. But if I'm also feeling like semi-competent, I'll put some little like stickers on and they have like clouds and hearts and bows and bubbles and like really cute kind of, I don't know, just easy, cute designs. And again, these are all pretty affordable. They're only like a couple thousand won each for the most part. And I picked up some little like glitters to do nail art with, nothing too like fancy or special. But it's just nice to see everything in person because sometimes when you're shopping online for nail supplies, you kind of think the color's gonna be one way and then it arrives and it's kind of different. So it's just nice to see everything and like select it in person. Oh, I have my, <laughs> I have my receipt here. Uh, not to expose myself, but I spent about 100,000 won. So just like a little bit more than 100 Australian dollars. I thought it was really good value because, you know, I, I don't go and get my nails done professionally very often because you know the price adds up and also I, I like doing them at home because I can like just sit and like watch a Netflix show or something like that so yeah that was like another little like niche Lucy splurge because with things like beauty products and fashion like I kind of talk about that with you guys so sometimes it's sort of work related but I definitely am not like a gel nail channel or do anything related with gel nails for work um I just like having them <laughs> you know what I mean like when you're a, a rat lady on the internet you can kind of like justify some rat lady purchases because it's for rat lady content but that's just for little rat lady me at home. Okay, for a moment there, I thought I only bought one piece of clothing and I was like, that doesn't seem correct because it's not. I bought a couple, but the first one I bought was this tank top. So exciting. <laughs> this is just like a redo of the Japan haul where I just showed you the two t-shirts from Uniqlo and I'm like, look, more basics. But here's the thing, basics are not really like fun to shop for. So when you come across one and they're good, then 
you know, you have to, you pick them up. So I picked up this singlet from A-Land. I think it was the one in Shinsodong. And I got it in this blue color. And I also got it in a white. And I will include some clips of me wearing them to show you what they look like. They're just very basic tank tops. But I just like the neckline of them. And I like the way the straps are. And they're mostly like cotton with a little bit of elastane, I think, for stretch. And I just... They're good, nice little basics. So admittedly, while it was exciting for me to find a tank top that I enjoyed, I understand that's not maybe super exciting. So I got this one and it's sort of like all crumpled up in this bag, but I will include some clips of me wearing it, I promise. This is from a Korean fashion brand called Kirsch that I was put onto by Katie from Steel Spotlight. She mentioned it in one or a couple of her videos and I was like, wow, their stuff is so cute. So I was kind of like on the hunt for it in Korea, but Kirsch, I would say are most known for their super cute t-shirts and I just really liked this one with like the blue cherry design. I don't know if you can see, there's like little diamantes on it. You know, I'm trying not to wear graphic t-shirts as much, not because I don't think they're cute, but because I know I personally like lean on them and there is nothing wrong with that, but I'm also trying to like try new things and different kinds of outfits. <laughs> Actually, when I had first saw Kirsch like in the wild, they only had this shirt in like a black with like a red or hot pink cherry. And I was like, oh, I wish they had that in another colorway because I really, really like that shirt, but I just don't, I don't really wear a lot of black t-shirts. Like I can appreciate it, but I just know the black would like not really be my thing. So then when I saw the store in Busan and they had the gray version with the blue, I was like, oh, well, <laughs> You didn't say you made it in that colorway. They had a dressing room as well. So I was able to like try it on and like see how the fit was. And I really enjoyed it. So I got it. And I think you can get Kirsch in a couple places online. So if I can find this shirt or like one of their online stores in general, I will link it down below, but it was just really nice to, you know, try it on. And then speaking of fashiony things, this is my little like treat yourself purchase of the trip. I actually haven't unboxed this yet, but as you know, I'm like a bag girly. When it comes to like fun fashion finds, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm partial to a bag. And I went to the Osoi showroom in Seoul. And basically before I went on the trip, I was like, oh, if I find anything like you know, special that really speaks to me and like I really like, then I'll pick it up for myself. And I visited a lot of secondhand stores in Japan and I was sort of expecting to find something like a secondhand piece that would really speak to me and that I would maybe splurge on, but I don't know, it just like didn't happen. And I'm not really one to like force a purchase just because if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. I had on my itinerary, to go to Songsu in Seoul and I've never been to that area before. And I knew the showrooms for two bag brands or like accessory brands, Marge Sherwood and Osoya were like right next to each other. And I was kind of thinking I was gonna get there like earlier on the trip, but it ended up being like my very last day, like the morning slash afternoon before I was meant to fly out that night. I don't know, I kind of was just like going in with the mindset of like, I knew the price range of the bags mostly as well. And I don't know, I'm not really like an impulse shopper and I guess it wasn't really like impulse because I looked at the bags before and like knew the price range and stuff. But as I was like on my way there, I was kind of like, you know what, if I see a really cute bag that I really like today, I think, I think I'll get it. And so I went to both of them and I kind of like went to one, went to the other, and then I went back to the first one, which is Osoy. But they had a bunch of cute bags but there was one that I found myself, like I kept looking back at it and I'll show, I'll just, what am I doing? I'll, let me show it to you. <laughs> like literally peeling the tissue back because I haven't used it yet, which is silly. But I was worried that I'd like film this video and like forget to show it to you. So here she is. Ba -ba -ba. So this is how it was shown and like displayed in the room. This is the Silver Mini Tony from Osoi. I did have to like double check the name, but Osoi is a Korean brand. They do really cute bags and shoes and they're very just like my style in that they're kind of like a little bit fun, a little bit feminine, but still not like too over the top. Like that's just my kind of bag vibe, but it looked like this sitting down and I kept looking back at it and being like, oh, it's so cute. But like, I don't like that the strap is like, so short and I really like the size and I love the silver color and I just I thought it was so so cute and like the shape everything about it I love but I was like I don't see a place to put a like crossbody strap or like a longer strap so I kept looking at it and I picked it up and was like trying it on in the mirror like you know on the arm and stuff and I was like this is very cute but like it doesn't really like you know go like on the arm so then the sales assistant who was there kind of came over and we were just talking and she was like oh you know any of the bags like you fancy and I was like oh I do really like this one I love the silver I love the size like it's perfect but I like having something crossbody or like over shoulder because like I like to move around and do things I'm a rat on the move you know and <laughs> she was like oh it's like an extendable strap and I was like 
sorry what but you just click the side buttons here i don't really have the hang of it clearly um but then the side strap can come undone and then goes up like that i'm a bit clumsy doing this still but it's the same on the other side so then you have the strap and you can put it over your arm and then it's like perfect and so uh yeah i had one hang up about this bag and then in under 10 seconds it was confirmed to me that that feature was solvable so it's like yeah you can kind of see that's like the short strap and then the longer strap so then i can be like a girly on the go and i just love like the shape of it on the side it's so cute they had these in like a bunch of different colors like they had it in like hot pinks and stuff as well but i knew the silver would be kind of something I'd get a lot of wear out of. I wear silver jewelry and I also wear quite a bit of like pastels and colors and denim and white. Like that is what I wear on the day to day. And so this like works with all of that. Uh, like silver, I don't know, it's metallic is kind of a neutral to me at least. So that was my little kind of fashion-y treat of the trip. Then I have this strawberry tote bag, which you think is a really cute tote bag, but it's from a local grocery store chain in Australia called Coles. So <laughs> I just put it all in here together, but uh, I went to Olive Young, which if you don't know what Olive Young is, it is a Korean Sephora, Ulta, huge beauty store. And they sell everything. And I got a bunch of stuff from Olive Young, like too much to show you in this one video alone. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of bits and bobs. The lip balm that I've been wearing in this video is this one from Romand. It is the Blasting Water Lip Balm. And I got it in the shade number nine, Peonies. And it's just so glossy and comfortable to wear. I really love a glossy, balmy lip product. And I was actually gonna order one of these online, but I figured since I was going to Korea so soon, I would just like pick one up in person because then I could like swatch all the colors really into it It's so pretty so I will link that down below and I will try and link anything that I've talked about in this video down below if it's available uh, What else did I get? I got quite a bit. I don't even know <laughs> I think I'm just gonna do like a separate video about everything that I bought at Olive Young So let me know down below if that's something you're keen on seeing like a K-beauty haul like all on its own because then i can really like you know dive in and talk about each of the individual things i picked up and when i say olive young stock a bit of everything i really do mean everything they have like nails body care hair care obviously skincare and makeup but they also have snacks so i'll give you like a little like sneak peek because when i last went to olive young i feel like they mainly just had like skincare and makeup but this time they had such an extended range of products across a lot of different categories including like drinks and snacks like they actually had like wine and champagne and like special types of makgeolli and stuff like that, like boutique beverages. And they had a little fridge section with drinks, um, like little juice pouches and things like that and kombucha. And the kombucha was really good. It was like a lemon iced tea flavor. It was kind of like sparkling. I had it a couple of times while I was there and it was so delicious. So I got like the little sticks to do the kombucha at home. I don't know, it's very yummy when I had it and they were also on special while I was there. So I was like, well, if they were on sale, and another thing that Olive Young had were snacks. Uh, and I will show you these because then I can eat them and not feel bad about not having shown them to you. And I got these like the night before I left. And I, again, I should have gotten more, but it's okay. I think you can actually buy these online from the Olive Young website, like the global website. But they basically had like a bunch of different like chips and they're like healthy healthy but the main factor is that i tried them and they were delicious i don't think i've tried these these two yet they had a variety of different like bagel chips of different flavors this is the honey butter bagel chip which sounds delicious and i'm so excited to eat these and when i went shopping on the last night i went to the myeongdong store so it's like pretty busy and it's quite a touristy area like it was a lot of tourists staying in myeongdong myself included i guess i noticed a lot of people were like buying multiple 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 packets of these bagels so i didn't end up trying these while i was there but but this this is the best snack i'm trying not to go like fully feral but i i need you to understand this is delicious i don't know how hard i want to go and like recommending this because someone might try this and be like literally ew it's not good but i politely would disagree because I think they're really tasty. These are the protein Castella chips. Now listen, <laughs> if you're like me, like moi, and you are meant to have a higher protein intake than probably what you do. I'm a like weight training girly and uh, the amount of protein I'm meant to eat a day, like pure protein I'm meant to eat a day is like, just, it's just a lot of protein. And you know what, I, I try to get there, I do, um, but it's just a lot of protein. Uh, and so on occasion, I do turn to, you know, high protein snacks to try and aid me in hitting that amount of protein I'm meant to get. Uh, and so I saw these and I was like, oh my God, it's like Castella, which if you don't know, is sort of like a, like a sponge cake. It's like a protein cake chip. 
and I was like, D was this made for me? The protein in this, <laughs> the protein in this is like negligible. Like it, it's more than would probably be in like a normal cake, but probably not as if you ate something that, you know, is just high in protein, like naturally, like a yogurt or something. I bought a packet of these like early on because I saw them and was like, that looks good. And they also won the Olive Young Awards 2022 for like snack, I think. So it's a bestseller and other people agree with me. I am not alone. These are delicious. And I was eating them and I was like, wait, these are so good. And then I gave some to Max and he was like, wait, that is really good. And then we also tried while we were there, the protein brownie chip. I don't, I don't think that one's as good. I think this is the best protein cake chip. <laughs> very delish, very good, very yum yum in my tum tum. And then speaking of favorite goodies <laughs> and another thing that I'm gonna be like, just maybe a little bit more excited than I probably should be for like what it is. There is this tea brand in Korea called Ocelok. It is owned by Amore Pacific, which is like a beauty conglomerate from Korea. So they own brands like Espoir, Etude, Innisfree, and they also own this like tea brand and these tea fields in Jeju. And they have a special strain of green tea that they created that they grow on this farm slash field in Jeju. And they use that in their skincare, but they also have tea that they sell that's tea for drinking, for, for Lucy for drinking, for Lucy to drink. And I bought some on my last trip and specifically this tea, the Sejak green tea. And it's just like the most delicious, light, tasty, fresh green tea. Like there's something about it that's just very special. And I rationed my bag that I bought from Korea when I went years ago. And I did find in my cupboard last week, the last bag of the tea in that, like the same pouch. So I bought another bag of this tea, but I also, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying not to laugh. Cause you know, when you just do something and you're like, I realize this is silly and more special to me than it is maybe for other people, but I am happy and I think it was a good consumer choice. I also bought some boxes of tea for like some souvenirs as well, which not pictured, they have been distributed, uh, but I got some matcha as well because they had an Oslock store at one of the art museums we went to. And I was like, oh my gosh, what a coincidence. It wasn't a coincidence. I knew it was near the art museum that we planned on going to. I was very excited. And they had like a little cafe. So we had some tea and I had like an iced matcha, like frappe kind of thing because everyone around was getting them and it was delicious. And it was made with this matcha and I thought it was very tasty. So I'm, I got some more because I bought a bunch of matcha and matcha making stuff in Japan and I drink matcha pretty much every day. So I figured, you know, I, like I'm going to use it. So I have, I have more. And um, <laughs> yeah, this, this one looks silly also uh, because it, <laughs> cause it's in like gift packaging. Okay, if we take the bow off, it doesn't look as crazy, but in fact, I will just, you know, slide the bow off really delicately. So I was wanting to get like a mixed kind of set so I could have like a few of every different flavor because I wanna, I wanna try them all. I wanna experience them all. I like trying things. So I ended up getting like a, <laughs> like a gift set. And I was like, I just want like a value set, but the gift set is the value set. Like it didn't need to be packaged up all cute. Like it's just for me. Um, and Max, cause we are both tea drinkers in this household. And I'm excited cause there's a bunch of like herbal teas, which we like to drink at nighttime. And it's just cute. Cause you just make tea and like cuddle on the couch. When it comes to souvenirs or things that I think you should buy in Korea, clearly <laughs> you can tell that I obviously think tea is a big one. And I highly recommend you to pick up some tea either for yourself or as a souvenir, like it's just delicious. But also earrings I think is a popular one. I went to a store in Hongdae and I typically wear like quite simple, minimal, like daily earrings. But every now and then I want something like a little bit flashier, a little bit more trendy. And these ones are cute and had like silver posts. So hopefully they won't irritate my ears. I haven't tested them yet, but they had these little like diamante chain linky kind of ones. These ones that are like double stars. And these very like princessy K-drama style butterfly earrings as well. And also this little like pastel beaded ring. I was in there for so long because they had so many options, but in the end I just got those few little pairs, which I thought were cute. And then other than the shopping, I did collectively at a few different Olive Youngs, which again, let me know if that is a separate video you wanna see. I went to a couple of standalone stores. I went to the Amore flagship in Songsu and I picked up this sunscreen, which I've been hearing a lot of buzz about. It's the Hera UV protector. Apparently this is one of the top selling sunscreens in South Korea and I tried a bit on my hand. I just really like the texture. So wanted to give that a go. And I also did a little bit of like last minute souvenir shopping there and picked up a few K-beauty bits and bobs for my family. 
and so I was able to pick out like a sample they gave me like five points and I could pick like how I wanted to spend my points on samples which is really cool and they had Sulwasu because that's also under the Amore Pacific umbrella and I got the white ginseng radiance refining mask like a little kind of I don't know if I would even call this like a mini a, a travel size I don't know it's pretty it's pretty hefty it's 35 mils and I haven't tried this from Sulwasu so I'm very keen to give this a go I feel like this is a must when you go to Korea but I went to Style Manda I went to the Hongdae location this time and I picked up two things I picked up this blush in Delectable. And you might have heard me talk about these Style Nanda blushes before, but I think it is such a gorgeous formula. But I find a lot of the 3CE makeup does lean a little bit warm toned. Even the like neutral to cool stuff they have, I still feel like leans a little bit warm, at least on me. And I just found like the last couple of times I picked up things from 3CE online, I'd thought they were cool toned, but when they arrived, they weren't, they weren't quite like the tone I was hoping for. So it was really nice to go in in person and like swatch things and test things. This is their blush in the shade Delectable. And I know it looks like kind of peachy, which let me just swatch it for you now. Okay, it's not showing up super well on camera, but it is like a milky kind of baby pink, which is funny because this was like the coolest tone blush they had. And I'm like, yeah, this, this is basically neutral. <laughs> I think this may have been discounted, but it was their dew nail color. So like more of a jelly kind of nail polish in the shade must be new. And I think it's a Mean Girls reference, um, but it's just like this gorgeous, again, kind of baby pink and it's meant to be sort of sheer. I do mainly use gel polish, but I do kind of shake it up and use regular polish as well. And then in this bag, I have the refill of the cushion I bought, which I do not have on me. Let me grab it. This is from Jung se Mool, who is a very famous Korean celebrity makeup artist. And I think they had a counter at the Shinsege Mall in Myeongdong. I think it was Shinsege, either that or the Lotte Mall. There's a few, <laughs> but this is the Essential Skin Nude Cushion and it's like a very light coverage, like dewy finish cushion. And I had heard so many good things about it, but they just had more shades and I hadn't tried the product and I just wasn't sure from what I was seeing online. And it was also never in stock online in my shade that I thought I was. All to say that when I saw it in person and they had like all the testers of all the different colors, I was like, okay. And I've actually been using this quite a lot. It's just very easy to use. It's not really high coverage, but if you like to kind of do like spot concealing, and then just have sort of like a soft sheer glow over the rest of your face, which like for daily kind of casual makeup, I really, really like. So this is like perfect for me. So yeah, I got this cushion and I also got a refill, which is included in the price. And then I got a bunch of samples as you do. And yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of it. That's all the fun, funky little things I picked up in Korea. It's so fun to revisit all the little treats that I got myself because I kind of just like kept them <laughs> in a corner of a room until I was ready to film this video. And so it's almost like a friend has brought me back like bountiful treats from their trip, except I was that person for myself. I just <laughs> put them aside and didn't let myself touch them until I filmed the video. So some of that is also like a little preview as to some of the places we'll be checking out in the career videos to come. So I am strapped into the editing machine, tap, tap, tapping, working away on those in the background. Choo choo, the content train does not stop. It stops for no man. It will dr drive relentlessly across the tracks forever into the night. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little career haul. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.